Hi everybody, my name is Horia Perutsu and I'm a developer advocate at Miro. In this video, I want to show you how to get started with AWS Amplify and how to deploy and host a Miro app on AWS Amplify. This specific tutorial is going to use Next.js and OAuth and um, you can probably use this for other React apps or similar things. And I'll show you how to set environmental variables, how to deploy and how to actually create a .amplify YAML file to ensure that all your built settings are correct. So uh, before we get started, let me show you the end product of this video, which is gonna be this deployed app. So I already have this uh, mostly working, and this is kind of the um, publicly available URL. You can see amplifyapp.com. We, all we have is this simple sign-in button, which is gonna start the OAuth flow. I'll click sign in, and then this is um, gonna take us to the Miro OAuth page here it's going to ask us uh, to read and uh, basically it's going to ask us for read and write access. Um, and we're going to install this app on a specific team. And I'll click, um, the, once I click this blue button, it'll take me to the redirect URL, which is just my Amplify app. And then that should show me that I've signed in successfully. And there it is. Uh, now it says that I've logged in successfully. So that is kind of the end goal of the app. And basically, we're going to be taking an open source sample from our uh, Miro app examples. So you can see uh, here's our example, Next.js OAuth. Um, and then we have the demo video of how to get it working and, and things like that. But this is using localhost. But now I'm going to show you how to use this in a uh, hosted environment with a publicly available URL. All right, so uh, let's get started. So basically, the first thing I'm going to do is. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a new app. And the thing is, first, we have to create a new repo. So I've already done this. Um, and what you can do is you can just git clone this repo if you want. So uh, just go ahead and git clone it. And basically, the reason is we need to tell GitHub um, which repo to deploy. So I'm going to actually deploy this one. Um, and you can see it has this .amplify.yaml file. And I'll, I'll explain later on in the video why that's uh, important. But you can go ahead and, and click on Git Clone and uh, go ahead and clone it. So once you've done that, we can go back into Amplify and we can click on a uh, new app. Uh, so we'll go to All Apps, click a new app, and then host a web app. And then here, it'll ask you to authenticate to GitHub. So I'll click Continue. It's going to ask to authorize. I'm just going to click Continue. Awesome, so this is really important. Again, you need to be signed in uh, to GitHub with user that you uh, that has the repo that you wanna deploy. So I've signed into my own personal, and you can see uh, here, I, I want to actually deploy this one, uh, and then we'll click Next. Uh, and then I'll app name, I'll just do YouTube a demo. Um, and then this is where it gets interesting, the environmental variables, I'll add this later. Uh, but for now, we're just going to click Next and then Save and Deploy. So this is going to take a few minutes to actually save and deploy. And while that is happening, I'm going to actually have to create a Miro app. And the reason is, is I'm going to need to correct, uh, connect that Miro app with this publicly available URL. So here's the uh, publicly available URL. I've just created this, and it's not yet deployed. But we can use this uh, to actually create a new Miro app. So we'll go to developers.miro.com and we'll go to create apps using examples. And from here, we're going to scroll down to Next.js OAuth. Um, and then we're going to click register app using example settings. And then I'll just call this Next.js OAuth YouTube demo. Uh, and then I'll just add a uh, YouTube demo one. And then add basically in our manifest, we can click edit and manifest. And we're going to go back to our repo here. And then we can just take this app sample.yaml, uh, copy and paste that. Here we go. The only thing is we're going to keep the same app name. And now we're going to actually change this uh, app URL. So again, we know that this is our app URL, main.blahblahblahblah.amplifyapp.com. So it ends in BPT4. So we're going to use that here. And you can see BPT4. And again, 
for the redirect URL, we're going to want the same thing. It's going to be the same, it's going to be the app name. So again, uh, you know, amplify app slash API slash redirect. So that looks good. And then the scopes we've already seen in the OF flow, we're doing read and write. Uh, so let's go ahead and click save. Uh, that looks good. And then we can go back uh, into our demo. Here's our demo one. Again, the app looks good. And now what we have to do is we're going to have to add the client ID and client secret into our actual environmental variables. And that has to be server side, not the build settings. It has to be server side so that um, it actually uses that when it's running the app. So um, basically in this example, you can see I have uh, basically in the pages and in the API, you can see in the authenticate, we're using, uh, you know, client ID, and then it's it's checking for that environmental variable, and then same with the client secret. And there's another one, uh, I think it's in redirect, that is checking for the redirect, re redirect URL. So these are exactly what we're going to actually have to uh, add into our environmental variables. So let's do that now. And we actually need to do that within uh, our Amplify app. So let's go to amp uh, manage variables. And then we'll do a client ID, and then we'll go back into here, take that, and then add variable client secret. And, and the casing is very important. Make sure you spell it correctly and have the right casing here. There's a client secret. And then one more, which is redirect URL. And again, that can be found right here. And then we'll click save, and, but we're not done just yet. In our build settings, we have to actually tell uh, Amplify that we're gonna uh, use, or actually we're gonna have to tell Next.js to use these specific environmental variables. And this is a little bit different for React. React has like a prefix, like React app and then environmental variable. But for Next.js, it's a little bit different. And basically, uh, you know, here's the documentation that I've been using to create this example. But it's saying like you know what is server side rendering, and then deploying an app, an XJS, a server side rendering app with Amplify, making variable variables accessible to server side runtime. So this is what I've been using, and it's this uh, essentially you know this dot uh, m dot production line that we're going to use. Awesome. So this is all ready to go in our repo. So we can just go ahead and basically copy and paste this. So. I'll go ahead and copy and paste, and I'll um, explain it in a second. So I'm going to edit this. Um, I'll make sure I edit it correctly. Yeah. So basically, uh, what we're doing is we're telling our app to look for client ID, redirect URL, and client secret, and add it into this end.production file, which is what Nextjx looks for to basically um, uh, render and, and use these environmental variables in production. So we'll hit save. We're going to trigger one more of the uh, deploy. And the way to do that is we can just simply uh, go into our app and we're just going to make a small change. And even if we just do a small change, like adding a couple spaces and commit, that should trigger a redeploy. And we can go back into Amplify, go into our apps. And now if I refresh, we should see that the app is provisioning and you can see the last deploy is at 55 and there it is. Um, so we're gonna wait for a couple seconds and uh, it should be ready pretty soon. Awesome, so now um, we see that it's been provisioned, built and deployed. So let's go ahead and test this app. So we'll go into our app and you can see it says uh, BPT4. We'll click on sign in and uh, you can see that it's working because you can see the client ID in the URL. Uh, the client ID is 7268, and then here is the 7268. And we're, again, Next.js OAuth YouTube Demo 1, which is what we want, added on the dev team. And again, it'll be taken to our redirect. Click Add. That will install it on the team. And then there you go. It says we've logged in successfully. So I hope this was helpful. Um, basically, you just need to make sure that the environment, environmental variables match between your AWS Amplify and your um, uh, Mira app. So specifically the client ID, the client secret, and the redirect URLs. And the way to get that redirect URL is to create this, uh, deploy this app into uh, AWS Amplify and then 
go back into the app settings on Miro, add that in there, and then also add it within the environmental variables and the amplify.yaml file. Uh, the code is going to be linked in the description and the documentation as well. And um, yeah, I hope this was useful. Please uh, give me feedback, smash that like button, and uh, I'll see you on the next time.